This module is about remote sensing and digital data. Remote sensing is a very uh, common source of digital data for GIS. And in this module, we'll, module we will cover remote sensing and its principles and how to interpret airborne and satellite images. And finally, I will talk about uh, the national data sets uh, in the form of digital uh, data from remote sensing. But before we do that, let's begin by reviewing briefly uh, the concept of waves and electromagnetic spectrum. So um, uh, light travels um, as waves, electromagnetic waves, and it's characterized by a wavelength and frequency. Um, so wavelength is the distance between two crests or two adjacent troughs. Um, and frequency is how uh, quickly the waves propagate um, or how fast the waves go up and down and that is the that is measured in Hertz um, if we know the speed of the wave then we can relate the wavelength with the frequency of the wavelength through this equation so speed of light uh, would be equal to the wavelength of light um, times the frequency of light and so um, the light that um, comes to us comes in many frequencies. And he here's an example um, that can help us understand how to go back and forth. So consider the operational land imager on Landsat 8. Uh, and it measures blue band uh, in uh, the wavelength range of 0.452 micrometers to 0.512 micrometers. So if we're, we were to change these into frequency, we will take the speed of light and divide it by the wavelength, and we will get the frequency. And in this case, um, the corresponding frequency would be 585.9 terahertz to 663.7 terahertz. So um, the light from the sunlight, the sunlight that arrives on Earth um, before it ends, enters the atmosphere um, consists of many uh, frequencies and here is um, the spectrum of the sunlight all the sunlight that arrives us is divided into these ranges um, so very very high frequency or short wavelength it's inversely proportional we call the gamma rays uh, then we have the x-rays and then the ultraviolet rays. These are all very high frequency uh, ranges. Um, and then in between the very high and low frequency, we have our visible light. This is the light that our eyes can perceive. Um, below that is infrared and then microwaves, actually microwave um, ovens operate in one of these frequencies in the microwave range. And then we have the radio waves. These are the waves used for uh, communication, TV, radio broadcasting, as well as um, cell phone technologies. And if we look at the strength of the signal or the radiation intensity uh, for various frequencies, we'll see that the maximum intensity is in the visible range. And so that's why various uh, creatures are, uh, eyes are evolved to be most sensitive in the visible uh, radiation um, range. Nevertheless, all of these ranges are useful for different purposes. They are sensitive to different uh, surface characteristics, and they are used um, for sensing different uh, characteristics in remote sensing. Um, similarly, acoustic wave spectrum is also used um, for various technologies, and that spectrum is basically divided into a couple of regions called um, based on our our ability to hear. So that's called the acoustic range or sonic range between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. Anything below 20 hertz is infrasound, uh, infrasound or infrasonic. Anything bigger than 20 kilohertz um, but less than gigahertz is ultrasonic or ultrasound. And when we go into gigahertz range, it's called hypersonic. And acoustic frequencies are also used for remote sensing. Uh, so what is remote sensing? Um, it means um, Perceiving or detecting from far away. Remote means far away. Sensing means to detect or to measure 
so if we have a source of light and the light reaches a target and is reflected and we perceive the light reflected from the target um, then the sensor uh, detects information about the target using the light from a source and that basically is the main concept of remote sensing now it's not necessarily necessary that source has to be separated sometimes target and source are the same thing uh, as the target is the source of energy for example in case of sound waves and the sensor can detect that uh, energy to understand the target um, and there's a la another scenario where source and sensor can be at the same place for example if you had to use your own flashlight to light up a target and then sense it um, that would be another way of sensing um, of course the the last scenario that sensor and target at the, at the same place is not remote sensing because then you are measuring in situ and for remote sensing you have to be far away from the target so here is um, what remote sensing uh, can be thought of as there is an energy source energy travels to the target um, and there's a second scenario where target is has its own energy and it's emitting energy and in both of these cases from the target then energy uh, carries information about the target and travels towards the sensor of course if there is intervening space between the uh, target and the sensor or the source and the target then that intervening space also affects the traveling um, energy and then once the energy reaches the sensor then sensor uh, can process that energy to retrieve information about the target so here are some examples um, uh, from everyday life echolocation a bat sends out a, a sound wave and that wave is reflected by an insect and it travels back to the bat and bat can interpret range of the object from uh, between the bat and the fly um, here's another example kind of the same thing where a dolphin um, uses echolocation in the ocean and in both of these cases um, the medium air or water also affects the signal um, a radar gun is another uh, form of remote sensing where the radar gun sends out a pulse which is reflected by a moving car and then the radar gun receives that and processes it to find the velocity or the speed of the car. Um, in another application, ground penetrating radar where a pulse um, of uh, microwave is sent into the ground um, to detect Sub, uh, subterranean objects or buried objects like concrete pipes or um, other such objects and in this case again we we're using energy to receive inf perceive information about uh, a target far away